Hello, I'm Joseph Graff. This video is one part of a 500 part video series where I analyze the 500 largest companies in America. If you'd like to check out my other videos where I conduct stock analysis on other companies, I will include the link in the description. Also, I'd like to say that if you enjoy today's video, please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post future updates. Lastly, I'd also like to talk about M1 Finance. M1 Finance is running a great promotion right now where if you sign up using my referral link, we both receive $10 that we can use to invest in the stock market. I'll include my referral link below. Thank you all for watching and here's the video. In 1958, Bank of America launched a division of their company that specialized in credit cards. By the year 1970, this division had become its own company and is what Visa is now today. Visa is a financial technology company that specializes in financial services, particularly credit and debit cards. Visa is one of the world's leaders in paperless payment methods. Visa cards are accepted nearly everywhere in the world. Visa's operating segments include service revenues, data processing revenues, and international transaction revenues. In 2019, the company's largest segment was its data processing revenue segment, which generated it $10.3 billion in revenue. Each of Visa's operating segments have grown pretty steadily over the past couple years. Visa is currently the eighth largest company in America, valued at $381 billion. In this next slide, I will be talking about earnings and earnings growth. These two metrics are important because they are the driving force behind a company's valuation and thus the company's stock price. Companies usually report their earnings every quarter. Large, stable companies tend to have positive earnings, while companies with high growth potential may operate at a loss in the hopes that they will become profitable in the future. Understanding a company's earnings and earnings growth goes a long way in being able to accurately value a company. In 2014, Visa stock earned $1.95 per share. In 2015, this number jumped up 19% to $2.32. In 2016, they earned $2.24 per share, which was a 3% decrease from 2015. In 2017, their earnings per share jumped up to $2.52, which was a 13% increase from the previous year. In 2018, their earnings jumped up again, this time to $3.98 per share, which was a 58% increase from the previous year. And in 2019, Visa stock earned $4.78 per share, a 20% increase from 2018. This data indicates that Visa stock has grown on average 20% per year since 2014. Now that we've looked at the company's earnings, we will now talk about its price to earnings ratio, also known as PE ratio. PE ratio is calculated by dividing a company's price per share by its past year's earnings per share. Generally, companies with low PE ratios are considered value stocks, while companies with higher PE ratios are considered growth stocks. PE ratio is a useful metric for understanding how Wall Street feels about a stock. In general, a stock with a PE ratio under 15 means investors are somewhat pessimistic about a company's future, while a PE ratio above 30 indicates that investors are optimistic about the company's future. As of May 7, 2020, Visa stock was trading at $182.72 per share. This represents a trailing 12-month price-to-earnings ratio of 32.89. This is higher than the trailing 12-month price-to-earnings ratio of the Standard Poor's 500, which at the time of this recording was 20.7. In this next slide, I will be talking about the company's price-to-earnings growth ratio, also known as PEG ratio. This ratio is calculated by taking a company's P.E. ratio and dividing it by the company's growth rate in terms of a percentage. It is generally thought that companies with a P.E.G. equal to or around 1 are fairly valued. Companies with a P.E.G. above 1 may be overvalued, while companies with a P.E.G. ratio below 1 may be undervalued. 
PEG is a popular metric among many investors because it takes both a company's earnings as well as earnings growth into account. As of May 7, 2020, Visa stock was trading at $182.72 per share. This represents a 2.14 trailing 12-month price-to-earnings growth ratio. This indicates that Visa may be overvalued if you use this as the sole metric to evaluate Visa stock. In this next slide, we will go over the company's dividend yield, dividend growth rate, and dividend payout ratio. Dividends are generally a sign of a healthy, profitable, mature company. It does, however, indicate that the company feels it has limited growth prospects as the company is choosing to pay cash to shareholders rather than reinvesting it into growth opportunities. Dividend growth rate is the rate that a company grows its dividend payments year over year. A high dividend growth rate is usually seen as a positive to investors. Dividend payout ratio is another important metric. It represents the percentage of a company's profits that it pays out as dividends. A payout ratio below 60% usually indicates that the company's dividend is safe and has room to grow in the future. A payout ratio above 100% means the company will almost certainly cut its dividend as that means that the company is paying out more in dividends than it is earning. As of May 7th of 2020, Visa currently offers a dividend yield of 0.67% as they pay 30 cents per share per quarter. Visa most recently raised their dividend in August of 2019 when they increased it from 25 cents per share per quarter to 30 cents per share per quarter. Visa over the past five years has increased their dividend by an average of 20% per year. They are pretty much the def definition of a dividend growth stock. Visa's dividend payout ratio is currently 22%. This indicates that they have a lot of room to potentially grow their dividend in the future, and I would consider their dividend to be pretty safe at the moment. In this next slide, we will be going over the company's price to book ratio, as well as its debt to equity ratio. The book value of a company is essentially the value of all of its assets. Book value per share is simply the book value divided by the number of outstanding shares. Furthermore, the company's price to book is just its price per share divided by its book value per share. This metric can help you understand if a stock may be undervalued or overvalued. A company's debt to equity ratio is calculated by taking the sum of all of its debts or liabilities and dividing it by the total shareholder equity. In general, companies with a lower debt to equity ratio are better equipped to withstand an economic downturn. Debt, however, can be used by companies to grow and expand, which is why a high debt to equity ratio is not necessarily a bad thing. As of March 2020, Visa had a book value per share of $13.07. This represents a price to book ratio of 14. This is a pretty high price to book ratio and indicates to me that a lot of investors expect Visa stock to grow in the future. As of April 2020, Visa had a debt to equity ratio of 0.48. This is on the lower end of debt to equity ratios and it indicates that Visa does not have a lot of long-term debt. In the next slide, we will look at the company's three year, five year and 10 year return. A company's past performance does not predict its future performance. However, it does allow you to see how a company has done in recent years. In general, a steadily increasing stock price indicates a company has been operating successfully. If you had bought Visa stock on May 8th of 2017, held it for three years and reinvested all the dividends you received, you would have seen an average annual return of 25%. If you had bought Visa stock on May 8th of 2015, held it for five years, and reinvested all the dividends you received, you would have seen an average annual return of 23%. And if you had bought Visa, Visa stock 10 years ago on May 8th, 2010, held it for all 10 years, and reinvested all the dividends you received, you would have seen an average annual return of 26%. In this next slide, I give my grades for this stock. 
I'll include grades for how I feel this stock is as a defensive investment, a growth investment, as well as an overall investment. My defensive grade takes into account how well I think the company would do in an economic downturn. My growth grade for the company takes into account how much I expect the stock to grow in future years. Finally, my overall grade is my personal opinion on the stock and whether I feel it is a buy or a sell. Keep in mind that these are my own opinions and I am not recommending you purchase this stock or make any investment without doing your own research. As a defensive investment, I gave Visa stock a B-. As a financial company, Visa does best when there are a lot of payments being made and a lot of money is changing hands. So they tend to do best when the economy is doing very well. On the other side of that, if we were to go into a recession, Visa would probably see a significant drop to its earnings. At the same time, Visa has posted pretty strong earnings over the past couple of years, and I think even if there was a recession, they would continue to be profitable. As a growth investment, I gave Visa an A+. I think Visa has the potential to grow and grow and grow as the world continues to use less and less paper money and turn more towards paperless payment methods such as credit cards and debit cards. Every time there's a transaction with a credit card or debit card, Visa makes money. I think this is a pretty fantastic business model and I see a lot of opportunity for them to grow in the future as Americans use more paperless payment methods as well as the rest of the world continues to use more and more uh, paperless payment methods. As an overall investment, I gave Visa A-. minus. I think it's a great company to add to your portfolio. I think they will uh, continue to raise their dividend for years and years into the future. As I mentioned earlier, they have a payout ratio of 22%. So I think this is a company that while it only pays 30 cents per share per quarter right now, I wouldn't be surprised if 10 years from now it was paying something like $4 per share. I think uh, for me personally, it would be an investment that I would look back on 10 to 20 years from now and be very happy that I made. That'll wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing this type of video for every stock in the Standard & Poor's 500, so keep your eye out for future videos. Thanks again for watching and take care.